let's do a little role playing. You're you. I'm the president of Mexico. You call me up. Okay. Well, uh, you meet one, with me. Sure. Okay. Ready? Like. Sure. Tono. Number one. Amigo, sure. Are you ready? We are going to build a wall. You are going to pay for the wall. We have been abused for a long time oh, at the border. Oh, You're going to pay for the wall. Now, wait a minute. Damn you, Colbert, for stealing my shtick. Uh, fair to say there's been talk these last couple of weeks of Donald Trump jumping the shark. It's a reference to an old Happy Days episode where Arthur Fonzarelli slapped on water skis, jumped over a penned-in area with supposedly a live shark in it, risking his life on a bet. It was the end of that TV series because it was so ridiculous there was nowhere left to go. Word today is Trump has purchased the ownership rights to every man-eating shark in the world and has threatened to fire every boat owner who seeks to have a skier navigate a shark pen. You've been warned. Welcome back without his Fonzie leather jacket, the man who single-handedly subdued a dozen man-eating sharks, armed with the remaining threads of a bad imitation Trump hairpiece. From 570 KLIF in Dallas-Fort Worth, Texas, weekday afternoons, 3 Central Time, Grant Stinchfield. After that introduction, Mr. Stinchfield, you have got to have something to say about Donald Trump and the tax plan, because some people are looking at it going, wow, nice and shiny, but really doesn't say much. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't. Hey, I can go get the hairpiece or the Fonzie jacket Don't if do you that. want no, to. Yep. in my no, closet please. in the back room. <laughs> <laughs> but but uh, with this look, little tax plan, though, people are saying that he basically just stole it from other people, and there's nothing really new, and it still helps the rich. Yeah, Donald Trump's tax plan. The one thing I'm impressed at is he's actually come out with a plan. Nobody else really seems to have a plan. I don't know how in-depth it is. I think this whole issue of couples less than 50,000, we got a lot of folks not paying taxes as it is. The big thing for me, though, is why do corporations get to pay 15% and the highest rate for, for individuals is 25%? Shouldn't it be equal? Why do corporations get a tax break over people. You know what this is? This is a pro-business plan. I love pro-business, but I'm really free markets. I'd rather say let's be free markets rather than pro-business. That helps people and businesses. I don't think it's fair. And as for this whole issue of bringing money back, uh, I'm for territorial taxation. Pay the money overseas, $2.3 trillion. He wants to give him a one-time break of 10% to bring it back to the United States. I say bring it back for free. It's not coming back here anyway. You want a jobs program, these companies will bring that money back in a heartbeat. I'm not even sure they bring it back at 10% rate. Couple of minutes, let's rip through three things here. Rush Limbaugh says, don't know how long it's gonna take, but the news is flowing water on Mars is somehow going to find its way into a technique to advance the leftist agenda. Come on, Rush. Do you think he was kidding? Or, or, but still, just leftist agenda and water on Mars, that's a shark jump right there. <laughs> You know what's a shame is I have great respect for Rush Limbaugh, and I wish everything I said, Ed, would make national news like this. <laughs> but this is ridiculous. And in fact, it gives conservatives, especially conservative talk show hosts, a bad name when everything's this giant conspiracy theory. Can't we just be happy for once we discovered something, scientists working hard, and I think it's pretty cool there's water on Mars. All right, now here's something else pretty cool, at least for those of us who come from a certain generation. They're talking about the next James Bond. I like Daniel Craig. I thought he does a hell of a job. Now they're talking about Daniel Lewis being part of it, um, or, or Damian Lewis, I should say. Look, he was great in Homeland, great in Band of Brothers, but a ginger as Bond? Come on, Grant. And this comes from a redhead. It doesn't make it. Yeah, well, I guess he's got the, the British accent. I, I don't know. I'm kind of with you. I loved him in Homeland. What about Lee Schreiber, the guy from Ray Donovan? I don't know if he can put a British accent on, but he'd be a pretty cool Bond. I'll give you another one. How about Benedict Cumberbatch? who's been in Sherlock. <laughs> I don't even know who that is. Oh, my. Really? Is Sherlock and the Star Trek series? Okay. You look him all up, right, and we'll talk go. about they that next week. My pop culture is bad. My politics is good. Pop culture, not so I'll well. get you next week in 30 seconds. Edward Snowden has joined Twitter, his first follower today. Seriously, the NSA. How perfect is that to end the show on? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it wasn't you, Ed, and it certainly isn't me. No, but think about that right now. He joins Twitter and the NSA is right there. You know they're going to get him sooner or later. They're never going to let this guy go, right? No, and they shouldn't, and I think no. they will get him, and I can't wait for it. I'm just waiting to see them. If Damian Lewis becomes Bond, then the first thing he has to do, if he goes after Edward Snowden, finds him, and does a little Bond thing, I'll be happy at that point. I think we'll all be real good. Uh, don't, there you go. Weekdays, 3 to 7 p.m., 570 KLIF in the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex. Grant Stinchfield is right there, the defender of liberty, justice, and all. Grant, always a pleasure, my friend. See you next week. Uh, you're the man. Thank you. Coming up next, Planned Parenthood on the offensive. And is it possible the most recent videos against the organization are not telling the entire truth? We'll answer that and more when we come back right here on The Hardline.